The Toyota Camry has long been one of America's most popular vehicles, and for good reason. It's provided a nice blend of practicality and dependability that a lot of car shoppers prize. That trend should continue with this all-new 2018 Toyota Camry. It rides on a new platform, its engines have been revised, and there's a new look both on the outside and the in. Let's go for a drive and see if it's got what it takes to remain a top seller. How does it look? Well, there's certainly a lot of styling to take in. The so-called keen look design of the new Camry is way bolder than before, with more creases and lines on every panel. This XSE model in particular goes even sportier, note the quad exhausts out back. Whichever trim level you get, the Camry looks far more interesting than before. How's the storage? With 15.1 cubic feet of space and a generously sized opening, the Camry's trunk is pretty much toward the top of its class, although it's not quite as big as you'll find in a Honda Accord. Now you can fold down the back seats to get more storage space, but you will note that the pass-through opening isn't as big as in some mid-sized sedans. Now, let's see how that looks when we throw some suitcases back there. You can store things in this center console cubby, or the storage compartment up front that hides beneath the wireless charging pad. You'll find two cup holders in the center console, and more space for beverages in the door pockets. Is it roomy? This is a spacious car, and for the front seats, you'll find head and legroom figures that are pretty much at the top of the midsize stand class. Same in the back seats, where there's generous room for adults, even if there's not quite so much legroom as you'll find in the Honda Accord. How does the interior feel? The interior is much nicer than was the case in the last Camry, and there are some really interesting design flourishes like this Y-shaped panel here and some of the nice touch points on this car. But there's also a lot of plastics that feel, well, kind of drab, and a lot of switches that don't look or feel particularly special. Is it well equipped? You can get pretty much all the toys on a Camry that are offered on any of its sedan rivals. Push-button start, an active safety suite with pre-collision braking and adaptive cruise, that touchscreen infotainment system, LED headlights, leather upholstery, a color trip computer, and an upgraded sound system. How's the infotainment system? It's great for anyone who liked how car infotainment systems looked about five years ago. Toyota's touchscreen system is tired, with bland graphics and few standout functions, though it is at least pretty quick to respond, and it has nice manual volume and tuning knobs. Unfortunately, you won't find support for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, features that have become pretty much standard amongst this car's competition. Is it a good daily driver? The new Camry really does what its predecessors have always done, which is to say, be very inoffensive while you're behind the wheel. There's a lot of isolation that makes sure I don't know too much about what's going on either with the car or with the outside world. And that's a good thing, that's what Camry drivers want. I will say that this one certainly feels like it has a little more weight and gravitas to the controls. The steering and brake pedal especially don't feel quite so mushy and floaty as they might have in the past. So as a daily driver, there's really a lot of reasons to like the Camry. Is it fun to drive? So sportiness has never really been part of the Toyota Camry mission, but this one at least improves a little bit on the fun to drive characteristics. The new platform has a lower center of gravity. It's got a more advanced rear suspension design. So handling while still not thrilling is at least improved. And you at least have pretty brisk acceleration from both of the engines. This four cylinder is 201 horsepower, or in this XSE model, 206 horsepower, which is nothing to sniff at, especially with the eight speed automatic that's now standard. And then in the V6, you get even more horsepower, 301, which certainly feels like quite a lot for a Camry. So again, it would probably be a stretch to say that I have a lot of fun while I'm behind the wheel of the Camry, but it's no longer this floaty mess when you go through bends, and there is at least a lot of horsepower to get you moving. How's the fuel economy? Camry fuel economy improves across the board. This four-cylinder model is rated for 28 miles per gallon city and 39 mpg highway. 
There's also a Camry Hybrid that gets up to 53 mpg. I liked the V6 engine, however, and those ratings fall to 33 mpg highway. How much is it? Pricing is right on par with other mid-sized sedans, with the Camry starting from about 24,000 for the base L model up to 35,000 for the loaded XSE V6. This car, a four-cylinder XSE with a handful of options on it, lists for just over 35,000. What are the negatives? The bold styling could be off-putting to some buyers, and the Camry doesn't offer all of the smartphone connectivity we've come to expect from some of its rivals. And there's a brand new Honda Accord out there as well, which I think drives a little bit nicer. Who should buy it? Frankly, anyone who's looking for a dependable, no-nonsense mid-size sedan. Now, if you're shopping in this segment, I'd still recommend taking a test drive of the Honda Accord as well, but there's a lot for car buyers to like about the new Camry. It's more spacious, it's got more features, it's got more power, and it's more fuel efficient than before, meaning it should still really resonate with everyday car shoppers. If you were paying attention, you might have noticed I was wearing a new watch. This is the Strat 3, designed by famed Formula One technical illustrator Giorgio Piola. To find out more, visit GiorgioPiola.com.